was laying back. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Y'all know what it is. The Reentry Connect podcast, spinning the track of my homie Bayak Thomas. Y'all already know. You know, we always just sit back, lay back. For those who don't know, spin the track is when you tell somebody to come to the yard, spin the track, the kick what's on your mind, or tell them, you know, how you feel, whatever the case may be. You know, maybe a lot going on in the outside world that you just can't control. But sometimes you do get the option to voice your opinion or voice yourself, you know, with individuals, you know, that you probably, you know, trust. So, um, Big Yacht, go ahead, introduce yourself, you know, let them know what this is all about. Uh, Big Yacht Thomas, uh, E. Dot Big Yacht Thomas, um, and I'm the love of life. Um, I live, stand, walk, eat, fight, and um, fight not to fight with and for the love of life. And that means I love your life. I love you. I love your freedom. I love your opportunity to live a life that, you know, we never thought that we would live. Mm -hmm. So um, we here on the track right now, um, sharing our truth, sharing our joy, sharing our pain. And um, I would like to open up and speak about how, you know, we be in that box, um, cell, incarceration, um, just in jail, in prison. Yeah. And so many of our people living their life. It was hard for me to understand how people say, oh man, um, I was going to do this for you after they say they're going to do something for you. Mm. And they don't get to do it. They don't come around and do it. For me, yeah. when I was in that box, it was so hard for me to understand and accept that because mm. it was something that was so simple. But um, being blessed with this opportunity to live life amongst mm -hmm. the um, lively, amongst the free, it's that easy because it's not, not enough hours in the day to do what you need to do, not alone, mm -hmm. and be able to do the things that you want to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, just me being keen on uh, a lot of things, I knew that when I was incarcerated, but at the same time, I thought it was going to be different for me when I come home, you know, because mm -hmm. I carry my people differently. Um, I carry myself differently. So I thought it would be easy for me to reach out to so many of my brothers. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not that easy. Wow. So you said, yeah, it's not that easy. Like a lot of times, you know, most individuals that are incarcerated, a lot of times we used to think that the world revolved around us. You know, we thought that, once we gave somebody, you know, our word and they gave us their word on the streets and asked them to move out for, we expected them to move out right away. And we felt as though that it would be vice versa, you know, when we were on the, if we were on the street. But now that we know that the world doesn't evolve around us and life does go on, you know, people do have problems out this joint. Same way with all of us, you know, something always is going on. Um, we come to realize that, you know, so um, what used to really um, mess me up is when people used to actually curse their families out, you know, because they didn't get around to sending them the money, sending them the Christmas package or sending them things. And let's be honest, truth be told, a lot of people, and this is not to step on anybody's toes or anything, but. When we did having a job, say if we were getting top dollar, which was like 42 cent, right? Yeah. Some probably may not have been, you know, getting that. But in a way, you can almost survive off of $60 a month. You can almost survive off of that if you buy the right things, your soups, your rice, um, you buy a couple meats, little snacks, blah, blah, blah. But you got to wise it out. So a lot of people, you know, was caught up in the gambling. You know, they would ask people, you know, hey, send me money. Did they go ahead and gamble it at the poker table? And sometimes I used to just cringe at things like that because it's like, wow, we're asking our families with this hardworking money to send money into us just to go to the gambling table to gamble it away. Do you think that's fair for a lot of families that's outside, you know, 
sending money into individuals. Now, I'm not saying that's the case in everybody's situation, but I've seen things like that play out that way. So, um, but I guess it's just one of those things, Bayot, where where we just we just learned how life is on the other side versus being on the other side. Totally different, totally different ball game. Totally yeah. different ball game. You know what I mean? And and I know that dealing with anybody in prison in general, um, most 95% of the time, most inmates, right, are going to be needy. And what I mean by that is because a lot of people fall off during your bid. You know, if you got a girl riding, okay, cool, they fall off too. But anytime you're dealing with anybody, they're all every they're always going to need something, whether it be some legal advice, whether it be some law work, case law, reaching out to an attorney. Uh, what it's always going to be some type of need, and they need money, send a Christmas bag. That, there's always some needy things going on. You just can't can't get around that. That's just prison. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for the real hustlers, they go on a bag though. But go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So it's a couple things that you touched on that I gotta um, you know, iron out. One, first and foremost, like I was never the one to call home and ask for money. Um mm-hmm. My situation was always um, whether I was trying to get out of jail and or well, I was trying to put myself and my peoples in a better position and I needed their help to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, Like literally it was like probably like my 16th year incarcerated where two people ran down on me, two of my greatest people at the time. They still great people in my life, but um, one that's no longer in my life, but two great women spazzed out on me about me, keep saying that I'm cool when I'm not, denying their money, denying their love and support in the way that they can love and support me. So oh, wow. that was one that, um, that that's not my case. I had no vices in, when I was incarcerated. So I didn't smoke, I didn't gamble, I didn't, I didn't do none of that. So mm-hmm. mine's was this different. So my thing is for me to know what we go through while we in there and get out here and not um, provide ways and means to help the men out in regards to their um, everyday fight for life. But with the redemption seekers, that's my way out in regards to feeling guilty for not doing this and that for the brothers and sisters that's incarcerated because um, we're working to fight to get our brothers and sisters home. So with the redemption seekers, we seek signatures for petitions to get individuals released from prison and or Mm -hmm. get their sentence short, Mm -hmm. reduction of their sentence. So Mm -hmm. that's what we, and I speak in terms of we other than I, because I'm not alone. You with me, um, all our other brothers and sisters that's um, in this fight for life with us, um, Mm -hmm. we're together. So I speak in terms of we. So Mm -hmm. we have many campaigns in regards to trying to get people home, uh, get people in the court system um, to put their best efforts um, on stage because they're uh, mm-hmm. deserving of a second chance. And even if they mm-hmm. don't get the second chance, because we're not saying this is a must, but we're saying mm-hmm. um, with the judicial system and just um, public opinion, you can't make a conscious decision um, that you can muscle, that you can actually accept and sit in your bed or lay in your bed at night and say, I done what was best. Um, yeah. Like what we talked about earlier, um, my brother, um, Tyree Wallace, um, and so many other individuals that I can say their name and give them freedom by doing so in this piece. Um, mm-hmm. 
but they are redemption seekers. They're individuals that's doing positive things and they deserve to be home. They deserve mm -hmm. to be considered to be released at best. Let's just mm -hmm. put these cards on the table and say that this is who this person is. This is who this woman is. This is who this man is. They're not defined by um, the charges that they done and or mm -hmm. the charges that they're innocent of in the mm -hmm. case of Dr. Um, it's, it's so many different things in regards to why I feel some type of way about not being able to do the most for the people mm -hmm. that deserve to be given the most because they in that box and then nobody shining and light in that set. And it's mm -hmm. cold, it's cold. So um, it bothers me that, um, like I just talked to you earlier about me living the life that I'm living now. Um, I have personal mm -hmm. issues. Very, we talk about mental health. We always got to talk about mental health. Um, and that's something that I'm fighting. It's something that I'm dealing with. It's something mm -hmm. that we deal with. So we ain't using no crutches and we ain't using no excuses. We ain't giving no excuses. Mm -hmm. We pumping mm -hmm. truth. This is the reality that we live in. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the, the byproduct of me. Okay, so let me go back to that because I was about to segue in that, but I'm gonna bring this up. One thing about me, I muscled everything that came with my incarceration. Mm -hmm. I knew um, what it was hidden for and I signed in blood. So when it came mm -hmm. down to me being in, um, in that box and I ain't had nobody coming to visit me, um, mm -hmm. I ain't had nobody sending me money. I couldn't mm -hmm. pick up the phone and call people at, at, at some points in my um, time. Mm -hmm. At first, it, 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 it put me in a state of depression. Honestly, it did. But what brought me out of it was when I was feeling some type of way about people that wasn't doing for me. And I'm like, I never was one that, 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 that burned bridges. I was never the one that come in grandma's house and steal a, steal a radio and, and, and go get drugs. And I was never one of them dudes. I was the mm -hmm. one that everybody called or everybody can believe and trust in. So, you know, how was I was the go-to guy and I was, you know, dealing with life the way that I was. Um, for one, it, 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 it tore me. It tore me when I realized that I was feeling some type of way about some good people. Yeah. Not doing what I want them to do, like you said, where I'm in my mind and my heart feeling though the world was supposed to revolve around me. When I was the criminal, I don't want to sign my name and blood in, on that contract to live this life. They didn't. They didn't say, oh, yeah, when you go up top, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you can count on me this way and that way. They didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I had to muscle that, that understanding, that knowledge that I, you know, ascertained in my own understanding of life that, mm -hmm. that I that I accepted, that they didn't accept. So I washed away all those feelings and thoughts about somebody not doing for me while I'm incarcerated because I'm the go-getter, I'm the doer, I'm the provider and protector. So I'm not worrying about that. So I moved past that. Now, when it come to me not doing the most for our people, it bothers me because I know how easy it is to do this or to that. And it can change someone's perspective on life. When you're incarcerated, um, it is so easy to be lost in despair. Where some people take their lives. I unfortunately have seen people take their life um, yeah, yeah, yeah. while I was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. But you can have an individual that can be lost in their thoughts in those moments, and they get that. Shh, that's the mail sliding under the door. Mm -hmm. shh, shh. That's it. You hear that? You know what I'm they saying? They cut the door. You, that was you, the you jump up. You jump up off the bunk when you hear that. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> so when that slide through that when that slide through your door and you jump up and you go get it go and get you it. see yeah you, you know what i'm saying bro you see one of these y'all that's that's what i'm talking about <laughs> when you when you see that it it changed your life it changed your life your whole your whole thing changed and um it's a piece that i wrote in my book that um me saying change your life just just resonated um it's a piece that i wrote in my book called what's good youngin and um in this book is an old head writing a letter to the young boy that's on the streets and in the book he's telling the young boy like yeah hey, you out there doing what you're doing playing your part i know you're going to come through this zone because you out there in them streets and when you come through this zone we're going to be sellies you know what I'm saying? Like you gonna bring new life to the situation up this jump. You know what I mean? Like, and it be the fact that we be so lost in despair that we don't even understand the things that we say and the things that we do. Um, one of the most pivotal moments in my in my incarceration was mm -hmm. dealing with um, people that was my people and. One of my one of my bros, his little brother had just um you know expired somebody on the streets. Mm -hmm. And the individual that he was talking to, that was his childhood best friend. So this right. is this this little brothers, this was two of his best people, his older brother and his brother. Um that was his best friend, but you know, we are brothers. So these were his Two of his best people, and they were in that having a conversation about this situation, and they was talking about how if he get locked up, he's on the run for life, you know, because the way the case happened, like if he get locked up, he gonna get life, and they wanted him to come up Huntington with with them, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow. I'm sitting there just, well, we standing in the yard and I'm just like, I hear the conversation. We, so many of us from South Philly just be on the bleachers. So we just out here just busting in the yard. A ge geographical South Philly. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey. Geographical yeah. South Philly. You know, yeah. uh, anybody, that was, anybody that did time with me, they know I'm from our Wilson Park. They know Ooh. at the end of the day, I've never been geographical. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Hey, but some, so some people were ge a lot of them geographic. That, 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 for sure, <laughs> I, I I can't shy away from that for sure. And and, and yeah, they be the worst of it. But it is what it is. But the fact of the matter is, like these these brothers was talking about this other brother, which is their brother, coming up state. This he just committed the act. We don't know if anybody even told on him yet. He didn't get arrested yet. And they brought him all the way in prison for life with them. It's the mindset, the things that you think about, the things that you say out your mouth, the things that uh, uh, rustle around in your heart. This all your character. This makes you be on what you be on. But at the end of the day, it's like, I brought that up to say, mentally, we invest in different things and in, in people, but it's when we have to get ourselves up out of the things that do us no good. Yeah, it yeah. do us no good. And then on top of it, most importantly, I can say that it wrong other people. Yeah, if you're yeah, doing yeah. something, if you're doing something that you feel as though that's best for you, and it may be cool, all right, it's best for you. But when you do something that you think that's best for you, but it wrongs someone else, you gotta mm -hmm. do something else. You gotta think about something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, and you got and you got a good point. You definitely got a good point. And and what I noticed that, you know, with everyday life, um, we got to go through life experiences 
in order to learn certain lessons. Uh, for many years, us living with a certain culture, within a certain culture means within prison, we notice that out here in the world, you can't mix the two. You can have some similar traits. You can have some of the mentality. You can stand on some of the principles. But that doesn't mean that others will honor it out here in the world. Exactly. That's just not gonna happen. You're not, you're not, you're not gonna you're not gonna honor something that you don't know about, like something that you're unaware of. So we get mad at people when they disrespect other people out here in the world, thinking like, why would you do that? You know, you know, you get your head taken off or something like that, or you know you'll get stabbed up for something like that. And out yeah. here, you got guns. You know, people get shot up. You know, but again, what seems right out here is considered wrong. But what's wrong seems right in a lot of ways out here. If you understand what I'm saying. But, but again, it's just something that we just learn over time. Because me, even before I went to the penitentiary, I didn't live a lot of life. You understand what I'm saying? I only had barely 14 years out here in the world. I spent half my life, literally half of my natural life, in prison. I missed all of my teens. I missed all of my 20s, like my early 20s. So these times where I'm supposed to be going through high school, going to a senior prom, going to a soft hop, you know, going to college and stuff like that, I spent that type of time on a basketball court. You understand what I'm saying? We was in a law library. We was in a library and, you know, playing every sport on the call out, aerobic walking. You know what I'm saying? So it took a lot more um, time for me to understand a lot of life. It took a lot of time, uh, Bayot. You know what I mean? And and I know we was talking earlier about something that a lot of individuals get confused with when they come home. Um, about when you got to literally show your identity to the IRS. Like, most people don't understand, so people get caught in limbo because people are just not, not worried about it. So I remember I came home, I think, when I went to go file my first tax return, and I had my W-2s, everything lined up, IRS sent the message like, yo, you got you to gotta, uh, you gotta show who you are. So here it was, I found out that I had to call, set an appointment, I had to go downtown, it's just like a habeas corpus, you got to present yourself, present the body, you got to be in front of them to show them, hey, look, here's my ID, here's my social security card, here's my birth certificate, just so they can identify and show that it's truly you, because on record, they're trying to figure out where the hell have you been for the past 20 years. So they want to know who you are, who they're dealing with, and what was your explanation. So just to get your identity back, you know, and even with that, you still tread in water because now you're still property of the state because you're still walking around with a mark. Um, you know, so it's a lot of things, you know, that people just overlook. You know, my again, I can share, all, all you know, a lot of things that, I had to get adjusted to that I just didn't know nothing about. The average person would be like, yeah, well, like I remember one time, I think I think it was Dr. Williams, somebody said something where they was like, oh, it took you it took you five years to do X, Y, Z, or it took you a few years to do that. Like, yeah, because I didn't have no mentor. Yeah, I didn't have nobody that was, that was guiding me and saying, hey, listen, let me take you under the wing. I'm going to show you some of the mistakes I made Look, this is how you do it. I didn't have I didn't have that. You you, you understand what I'm saying, Bayop? And if you no, have something like that, if you yeah. have something like that, that'll save you a lot of time from the no. mistake that you're going to make. But some but people don't don't be they don't be thinking like that. They don't want to give you those extra jewels, you know. So because a lot of them intimidate that you may do better than them. But it's not the case. You're not in competition. We just trying to win. We try, we That's try true. to get ourselves together. Yeah. Get yeah. me out of this pitfall. Get me out of this setback. Get me out of all these years I didn't waste it, you know, in prison. I'm trying to fast forward. 
There's no way I should be able to catch you. Especially if you've been living out here all these years. There's no way I should be able to catch you. But when they see your energy, when they see your drive, when they see the love of life on every episode, when they see the love of life in every poetry jam, when they see the love of life over in Harrisburg ringing bells in the streets, when they see the love of life on every uh, TV station, that he, he don't miss. He making noise. Oh, he ain't got nothing going on, though. But you making noise. It's more than what the average person is doing. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that come from these certain places where we've been, and they forget to look back. They forget to reach back out. Hey, you know, I'm here to give you some motivation. Yo, you ain't got to go through it like this. Listen, there's a better life out here. Keep fighting. Give me some motivation and encouragement. But people will sit back and criticize us. Dad, Bayak, you ain't doing this right. Dad, Keenan, you ain't doing this right. Are you serious? Yeah. What are you doing with your life? Are you are you are you even making a change anywhere? Yeah. But here it is. We'll get criticized for the things we do. But that's one just, thing about that. Yeah. One thing about that, bro. It's like, yeah. um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. an individual will find something bad to say about you because they didn't find something good inside them. Mm. So in reflection of their vision, they despise what they love because they can't be that person themselves. Wow. So they feel some type of way when they see you getting up out of their junk. Mm. They feel some type of way when you talking differently. Talk. It makes them feel some type of way. Ooh. But with me fighting through everything I fought through, 25 years, six different penitentiaries, and every penitentiary, you have to change your mentality. Talk to them. Every penitentiary, you have to change your mentality. And I learned that from coming from Western Pittsburgh was shut down to Dallas. That transition right there threw me through a loop. They was looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> they used to run the mon monster, get him. Oh, he acting crazy. Get him. Monster, <laughs> monster, get him. Get him, get him. Attack, I'm attack. Like, I'm like, what? Like, what? He did this. He said this. This, this, this is what they, they breaded me. Wow. They breaded me. So it's the mentality. So it's like, if you think, like you said, bro, I thought left was right because I had to do it to make things right. Mm. So your understanding of left being wrong, I'm not trying to hear that. You trip it. Because at the end of the day, this is my life. You don't understand it because you from over there. Go back over there or don't come over here. Because you do, it, yeah, it's going down. Go so on. the facts of the matter is we got to stop pulling each other down. We got to support each other. I don't care if he told whatever, this, that. I don't care about it. That's his life. Mm -hmm. This is what we doing. We saving lives. This is what we doing. We helping this girl get out of prison. We helping this woman get out of prison. We helping this boy get out of pr prison. We yes, helping sir. this man get This is what we doing. We pumping positivity. We pushing forward. What are you doing? Yes, sir. Come join in. You don't got to spend no money, but in certain situations, money is needed. Yes, sir. It's not about the money, but it's about the money. Yes, <laughs> like sir. big bro. So. But the facts of the matter is we don't need your money. We yes. need your presence. Support. We need your presence. We need your support. If you just say good work, bro, I like what you're doing. Keep that up. That's what we need. If yes, you sir. join in on this Zoom call that we about to have, the Redemption Seekers having a Zoom call, you join in in this Zoom call and you bust it down and you figured out something, then help us figure it out. That's it. 
if you know something, then help us know something. Because that's what we're doing. We want to share our knowledge. Share we want to yeah. share our wealth. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And it's breaking, and it's breaking that mentality, like you say, the jailhouse mentality of, like you said, having no respects of person. You know, no matter what a person did, whatever they've been through, we're still all people. We're still all human beings. People are still going to need jobs. People are still going to need housing. People, that it's it becomes a sense of broadening your horizon. Forget all that jailhouse stuff that you know that 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 makeshift stuff that caused a lot of confusion, and it still does cause a lot of confusion because it's like. It's like the devil's workshop in there, just in general, through federal prisons, jail, everywhere, because people had this certain mentality. But it's time to step outside of that. Like, no, it's more to life. It's more because when you get stuck there, just imagine how many people you've seen go in and out of prison. Uh, they got five, six Hello. numbers. Five, look, they got five, look, they, they flashing they five or six numbers. Yeah, I got six numbers and all that. But now, right, now they get tired. But they get tired at an old age. They get tired at about 45, 50. Now, all these years you spent going in and out of prison, now you want to stop. But hold up. You ain't got no retirement fund now. You got to work. You, you, you getting old. Your bones is shifting. You got diabetes now. Your blood pressure out the roof because you haven't been taking care of yourself. So now they're looking back. You know what I'm saying? Wishing. Like, that. I wish I would have straightened up way back then. I wish I would have had a different mentality than I did have, than I do have now. Sometimes it'd be too late because I it's, it, listen, and I'm not, again, I'm not putting no names out there, but there's some people that be in my inbox. They may hit me up on the phone. Things like that. Oh, things are hard. Times are hard. Times are hard. But when I used to tell them way back 10 years ago, yo, start getting right, man. It's going to get serious out there. Now they knocking on the door. Yo, yo, you remember, do you remember, you remember the talks we used to have? I used to, yo, you remember the times we used to spin the track and all that? And I would, I would give you a heads up, yo. Get right, yo. That joint gonna get serious, man. But then it's like, it's too late. What can you do? What can you say? You know what I'm saying? So, and I feel bad, man, because again, it's too many, especially uh, us knowing where we come from, Bayot. It's too many of us out here that made it out. Because we got people that made it out of licenses. We got people who made it off of death row. We got people that, you know, got exonerated. We got people that, you know, just came home because they had short time, whatever. It's too many of us out here right now for us not to be supporting one another and making a lot of noise for yeah. the individuals that are inside, for the no indi- for the voiceless. We should no be doubt. a strong voice for the voiceless. There's some look at look at all of the you know some of the some of the most prominent cats, man, that we knew. Sharif, Reef Man, Stephen Johnson, Reef, you know, no up, up, um, up um, Phoenix. You know, you had yeah. Tyrone Glenn. He was a sharp, sharp tool in the shed when it came to law. You know, you got you got so many people um, throughout the system, man, that we could be a voice for, but people just out here just doing them. People will forget. You got to always remember this, but got, people will forget 20 years and 20 minutes being out here on the street. We used to walk the track all day. We do 20 laps. We keep going to that yard and they'll forget 20 years and 20 minutes of being out here on the street, man. Yeah, it, it, it was crazy when you said that to me the first time because um you misunderstood something that I said in regards to uh me reflecting so, uh, uh, a situation my little brother was in. And I was saying if it was me, I would have went back to prison. Mm. Um, but it's like, this is this is this is what I want to say to the young one and to the ones that still in that life and still invested in that life. 
So you out there pushing your pistol and um, you doing it with your mans and them, or you doing it for your mans and them and all that. Uh, and you know, you know, this is what it's about. You willing to die for this. You definitely willing to kill for this. But um, are you willing to commit suicide for this? You willing to put, you know, your jaw, whatever you got to your head or to your heart and um, pull the trigger. And then um, you willing to kill somebody and go to jail for the rest of your life. And um, how you feel if your right hand, your day one is the one that told on you, that got you that life sentence. There you go. How do you feel when um, the people that you, um, you know, actually moved out with and for, when you get locked up, you find out that they the ones that's eating your back out, talking crazy about you, about how you shouldn't have did that. And you in the way for doing that. You deserve everything you got because you did that. These are your people. These are the people that you put that work in for. How would you feel if that happened? How would you feel if you get um, life sentence for somebody? You moved out for him and um, he take your baby mom from you. She's not coming to see you. She's not visiting you, sending you money. And um, now she got your man in her bed. Now your son calling him dad. How would you feel about that? You still want to put that thing in your hand and say move? Um, how would you feel about having um, an opportunity to stop? Like bro said last night, stop. Just stop everything and play everything out in your mind and let it trickle into your heart before you make a decision and mm -hmm. say that we're going to go down this street right here. Now, we got so many different ways behind us we can go and we can go to the left and we could go to the right. But we go straight ahead. We going straight into the penitentiary or the, a grave. It's Tell no me. way out. It's Talk no way out. It. It's no way out. You going straight to the penitentiary or you going to the grave. You go straight. Um, when I was eight years old, they started telling me I'll be dead or in jail before I'm 21. Mm. And in my mind, I heard that they was telling me that I'll be dead or in jail by I'm 21. So in my mind, I said, it's going to be them before it's me. Mm -hmm. um, I go to prison, but I ain't going in that grave. And I'm going to do um, what I got to do so it ain't me or it ain't my people's. I know better now. I know that that wasn't what they was telling me. They was telling me to stop, that I was better than that, mm. that I deserve a better life than that, that I was smarter than that. And mm. for me, I heard what I wanted to hear. Oh, they mm. saying I'm going to be better in jail, but I'm 21. Well, mm. that's what it is, then that's what it's going to be, because yeah, this yeah, is how yeah. I move. This is how I'm carrying this junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes back to mental health because that's obviously a mental deficiency because mm. who wants to die? Yeah, yeah. Even the person that has those suicidal thoughts, they only want to die because they're not living the life that they want to live. You're right, you're right. They only want to die because they want that pain to stop. So at the end of the day, we have ways and means to give you a better life, to provide you, not even provide you, not even give you. I'm a certified peer support specialist, so I can't help you uh, save your life. I can't help you change your life. But what I can do is help you save your life, mm. help you change your life. So mm -hmm. it's about knowledge and understanding once you have the knowledge and you understand um the tools that you acquire by seeking said knowledge now it's on you to use it yeah yeah to you um for me um bro it's real um hard and it's real easy for me to even be in this light right now that's why i always somehow, some way, try to shy, shy away from the light. Um, because 
I know my voice, my presence and all that oppresses people. Mm. You know, like what we talked about when somebody always having something negative to say. Um, mm. That right there for me um, is fuel. It fuels my passion. It, it, it fuels my desire to be um, everything that I never thought I would be, who I am right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never thought that I would evolve into the man that I am today. Mm. And the guy that I was then, I look at me like, you was a sucker. Who you talk about? Wow. Because I was ignorant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so many of our children today are uneducated. They're ignorant. Um, they're lost. And mm -hmm. they believe that they are saving themselves when they're killing themselves. Sure. And it's, it's a thing when you can show somebody a mirror and they never seen a mirror before. Never. Just imagine that. Somebody never seen a mirror before. You show it to them. And they thinking that they look a, a, a certain way. And you show them that mirror and they see. And they horrified about what they see. Like, that ain't me. No, no, that's you. Yeah, you killing yourself. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, B. I, you got a good point. And a lot of times, especially for the young, younger crowd right now, and I know that a lot of times you may think family are putting you down. As Bayok said, you may think that they're coming at you. Now, there is a big difference between talking to someone and talking yeah. at someone. No doubt. That's no doubt. Things, because now if you're talking at me, of course I'm going to grow defensive. Of course, I'm going to put my guard up and think, what you think I'm stupid? What you think I'm retarded? Why are you speaking that over my life in a lot of ways in which we can't explain? But now if you're talking to me, now we still may be hard-headed because we're kids. We're, we're adolescents. You know, we don't really have too much rationalization that can go on in our mind because we just are ruthless. That's how most kids that, you know, that has no way in life or has no direction come up with very little and the only thing they can do is adapt to their peers and that's when the peer pressure comes in but again the difference between uh the way you convey your message is is a big thing because kids gonna do what kids want to do anyway but what we're trying to convey is listen think about it before you squeeze that trigger Think about it before you run around your homeboys, the one that has the gun. Because usually it may be a circle of kids, and one of them may have a gun, came up on a ghost gun, a 380 or something. You better be careful you hang around them because the minute that person pulls the trigger, bang, you're already guilty by conspiracy. You conspired to commit the act because you was with the person. Oh, I didn't know he was going to do it, but you knew he had a gun. Why else would he be carrying a gun on him? Oh, 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 but uh, that's it. It's, 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 it's even it's even deeper than that because um, in the case like I just spoke of um, um, my little brother Tyree Wallace, like yeah, he was what you just said. He was with some individuals, and he went in the store with these individuals. Yeah. And being as though he is who he is, um, everybody knows him. He's got a, a bubbly personality. He's a good dude, genuine good dude. And um, the people in the store knew him, but mm. they didn't know the people that he was with. Mm. So they all left. And he went on about his business. They came back. I don't know if it was all of them, whatever, however way it go, but they came back. And they robbed the place and end up expiring um, the owner. Mm -hmm. And when the people, his family, told the police about what happened, all they knew was him. Mm. All they knew was him. Wow. And um, he's serving a life sentence because of that. He wasn't even there when it happened. Mm. We got to be mindful. We got to be mindful of who we are around because mm. their actions will become our actions 
even if we didn't act. Association. Yeah. So that, that conspiracy, that criminal conspiracy can carry the same weight. People don't understand that. That criminal conspiracy, that can carry the same weight with you not even pulling the trigger. You don't have to pull the trigger in order to be charged with murder. Just be conspiring and being around at the time, they can charge you with the murder. And you may yep. not, you may not even have touched a gun ever in your life. Guilty by association. Easy. It's 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 so many stories. I tell one story and I I you know shine light on people and um, birth their freedom through this piece and me speaking their name. Ty Tyrone Green, I met him at um, SCI Huntington. Um, he has a life sentence. I don't know what's going on with him. I have no contact with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, inshallah, he's home by now. But he took somebody to the store. He was going somewhere. He's seen somebody he haven't seen in years driving. You see me. Oh, yo, what's up? What's up, bro? What's going on? Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm going to such thing. Oh, yeah, I'm going that way. I, come on. All right, come on. Get in. Mm. You stop at a store. Oh, yeah. Go, go to the store. The guy get out the store, go in the store, robs the store. Wow. Robs the store, kill the, the, the cashier. Get back in the car. They drive off. It wasn't no, oh, get out. Go, go, go. Get out. Give me out. No. You get back in the car. They go, he go on his business. Drop the guy off. He go about his life. But it was his vehicle that was registered to him. Mm. He got locked up for that. He's, I don't know. Inshallah, he's out. But he had a life sentence for giving somebody a ride. Give somebody a ride. Give yeah, somebody a It's just that easy. How many times, you know, I remember I can recall sometimes back when I was a young kid, like, you know, 13, 14, you know, like I was saying, like one of the homies had, you know, a gun on them and stuff like that. And sometimes there used to be fights. When I used to be up uptown there where my grandma way was, there used to be fights at like King High School. So then if, if fights jumped off, we would be like, yo, they be like, yo, get in the car. One of my homies had a wheel. All right, yeah, let's all jump in the wheel. Now, mind you, one of them had a gun. You know, used to flash it off, show the clip, the magazine, whatever. Like, yeah, we good. And I'm jumping in the car like this is a cool thing to do. Like, yeah, we don't want, I don't want to show them that I'm a nut. But what if we jumped in that joint, you know what I'm saying, and he would have shot somebody? We would have been all in that boat, which I mean, which eventually happened, you know, like later on down the line with other people. Whereas I wanted to hang around that crowd. I wanted to be around certain people. And just then, next thing you know, bang, I'm laying up in prison. So it's, it's one of those things, as you just mentioned, about being careful who you be around. Be careful when you, if your mom or your aunt or somebody say, listen, I don't like you hanging around that crew. Is because they're using wisdom and knowledge to discern. Get out of there. Gotta get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. You know what I mean? So, but it's only but so, like I said, if it was a lot more of us, if we came together stronger, Bayat, because there's too many of us that been through that, that trial and error, for us not to be speaking, the small percentage that you see out here, come on. Out of 10,000, out of 10,000 people that probably was released from prison, it's probably only about 400, 500 that's probably speaking up. That's not enough. That's not enough power to really get to these young kids. You know what I'm saying? It's not enough power to really take over the city like we want to. All right. So we're going to talk about taking over the city, bro. We're going to talk about the power that comes in numbers, bro. At the end of the day, like... um. Are you from that life? I'm talking to you. Are you from that life? I'm cut like that. Um, things that people uh, shy away from, uh, turn their nose up at, ain't none of that labeled on me. Uh, so my word is my truth. And my truth, I'm willing to die for it. I'm willing to die to save your son. 
I'm willing to die to save your daughter. That's what that's how I'm pumping this. Um, this this is my life. Um, how is it that you will allow something, whatever, rumbles in the wind to stop you from joining in what we got going on? It's not me, it's not Keenan, it's not bro. This us. It's to save your son, to save your daughter. Um to help your mother, your father that got life come home. How you muscle that? How you sit on that bed or lay in that bed at night like, yeah, you did what's right when you knew the redemption seekers was moving and you ain't, you know what I mean? Mm. Some type of way, uh, assist. Take part in, join in, support. There you, go. you ain't send a tweet. You ain't send a, 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 a like, a thumbs up. A heart, nothing. There you go. That's it. Support the future, man. We talking about the future here. You don't like the life um, you living, where you hearing gunshots, ambulance, people coming to come scoop up people off the ground and all that. You tired of that? Cause I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. Come join in. You're right, you're right. And that's it. I told said in the other podcast, man, a like and a share goes a long way. You know, everything is not monetary. Everything ain't about money. Join in, help, support. Say, hey, how you doing? Some people will tune in and tune right back out. It's okay to give a thumbs up. People don't understand that social media tells on people. You know what I'm saying? Just imagine if social media wasn't around. Dad, how do you really feel about me? You know what I'm saying? We come from an era where we didn't see social media until years after it was out. So just imagine how people really thought about us at times. But it's all good, though. But look, we coming up on that hour, Bay Yacht, and we always want to spin that track. You know what I mean? But again, it's the Reentry Connect podcast with my homie E. Bay Yacht Thomas. You know, it's always good to spin the track, get things off your chest. No particular topic in, in general. We just voicing, hey, this was on my mind, and I'm kicking it. Yeah, I mean, if we was in the real yard um, up top, you know what I'm saying? We probably would have bring the flicks out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's see what's going on out there. E- hey, even though the flicks was probably about 10, 15 years old, look, bring them out anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bring them out anyway. Yeah, we want to see what's going on. Yeah. People at the block parties and all that. But, again, those are some memories that we can look back on like that. Those were some good memories, but at the same time, we thank God we're not in that predicament anymore. And we're praying that the others that are in that predicament come home soon. You know, we don't wish confinement on anybody. We believe in second chances. We believe in reformation. We believe that anybody can be reformed. No matter what you've done in life, there's always opportunity and space to change. That goes for anybody. So if you're watching now, always keep your hope, whether you're incarcerated or not. Keep driving, keep pushing, and know that better is coming. So without further ado, Bayok, we're going to get ready to end this thing. You know, Reentry Connect podcast, spinning the track. Till next time, we'll hit y'all, hit y'all up later. All right, peace.